Coming up on today's Airborne, the So announces its ultra-long range Falcon 8X. Gulfstream introduces the G650 ER, and Piaggio Aero presents the new Avanti EVO at eBay's 2014. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The So Aviation has launched the Falcon 8X, the newest addition to the Falcon family in the ultra long range category. With eight passengers and a crew of three, the Falcon 8X will be capable of flying 6,450 nautical miles at Mach 0.80. It will be powered by an improved version of the Pratt & Whitney Canada PW307 engine that equips the Falcon 7X. Combined with improvements to wing design, Dassault says the new power plant will make the 8X up to 35% more fuel efficient than any other aircraft in the ultra-long-range segment. Dassault Aviation Chairman and CEO Eric Trappier said, quote, The Falcon 8X will be our new flagship and a great complement to our product line. It embodies the best of Falcons that have come before, with the most capability of any Falcon ever. First flight is expected in early 2015, with certification in the middle of 2016 and initial deliveries before the end of 2016. While the Falcon 8X is Dassault's long-range jet, Gulfstream is also in the long-range jet market with their new ultra-long-range G650ER. Tom Patton reports. Gulfstream says the ER variant of the airplane represents an increase of up to 500 nautical miles over the range of the G650, which entered service in 2012. It will fly 7,500 nautical miles at Mach 0.85 and 6,400 nautical miles at Mach 0.90. A G650ER set two speed records during flight testing earlier this year. The aircraft flew from Los Angeles International Airport to Telemarine Airport in Melbourne, Australia at an average speed of Mach 0.86. It later flew from Hong Kong to Teterboro, New Jersey, accomplishing the 14-hour and 7-minute journey at an average speed of Mach 0.865. The two records are pending confirmation. The G650ER will share the same cabin, avionics, and systems as the G650 and is undergoing FAA certification. Current G650 owners and order holders will be able to upgrade their original G650 to a G650ER beginning in the first quarter of 2015. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Biagio Aero Industries has announced the launch of the new Avanti Evo twin turboprop aircraft. The Avanti Evo was unveiled at the European Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition, eBay's. Piaggio says the new Avanti Evo builds on the Avanti P180 platform and brings a host of improvements and upgrades to boost efficiency, reduce operating costs, provide greater levels of comfort for passengers, and to be kinder to the environment. With a maximum speed of 402 knots, the Avanti Evo is the fastest turboprop in the world and faster than many jets. 
Yet Piaggio claims it does it with fuel economy and emissions levels significantly below that of rival aircraft. Among its many improvements are aerodynamic refinements, five-blade scimitar propellers, system upgrades that include anti-skid braking and other advancements like an all-new improved cabin. In addition to the new Avanti EVO aircraft, Piaggio Aero also revealed plans to strengthen its existing customer service organization and service network to improve customers' ownership experience. With 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it's fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. If you're running a flight school and can't afford to buy or operate a new trainer plane, what do you do? The answer for Jerry Gregoire was to create his own special purpose trainer. Search Redbird's Red Hawk Trainer, We Did It, on Aero TV's news channel. SpaceX's Dragon Cargo spacecraft splashed down on Sunday in the Pacific Ocean, approximately 300 miles west of Baja, California, returning more than 3,500 pounds of NASA cargo and science samples from the International Space Station. After recovery, a boat transported the Dragon spacecraft to a port near Los Angeles, where it will prepare for a return journey to SpaceX's test facility in McGregor, Texas for processing. William Gerstenmeyer, Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations, said, quote, Now that Dragon has returned, scientists can complete their analysis so we can see how many results may impact future human space exploration or provide direct benefits to people on Earth, end quote. Dragon is the only space station resupply spacecraft capable of returning large amounts of cargo to Earth. The mission was the third of at least 12 cargo resupply trips that SpaceX plans to make to the space station through 2016 under NASA's commercial resupply services contract. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back! Honda Aircraft Company announced several achievements and milestones in the development of the Honda Jet at the European Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition in Geneva, Switzerland. They reported that the first production aircraft is in its final assembly, with the first set of production GE Honda HF120 engines recently delivered to Honda Aircraft. The engines have been installed and Honda Aircraft will soon begin conducting ground tests on the airplane. Its first flight is anticipated this summer. Honda Aircraft Company President and CEO Mickey Masa Fujino said, quote, Honda Aircraft Company's most important goals are achieving Federal Aviation Administration type certification and delivering the first customer aircraft. Our total effort is focused on reaching these much-anticipated milestone in the first quarter of 2015, end quote. Honda Jet Production continues its steady pace in advance of entry into service with nine aircraft on the final assembly line. Oshkosh is coming up fast, and as usual, the a and crew has spent the last few months figuring out what we'll do this year to raise the bar. We've decided that this year's big addition to our AirVenture coverage will be a free ebook that's to be produced on site containing the best pictures we've taken of the event, including commentary, stories that outline the nature and alert of Oshkosh and EAA, stories about the most notable planes, programs, and products, and yes, we plan some personal stories remembering EAA's founder, Paul Poporezny. 
ANN invites our readers and viewers to contribute to this amazing project. Those wishing to contribute stories, especially those reminiscing about Paul, photographs, and other content are urged to do so no later than August 3rd. ANN will have a sign-up page available within a few days at www.kindredspirit.com. We welcome your input for features, content, photos, and other ideas for inclusion in this year's yearbook. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.